Film Speak, the home of any films and filmmaking from around the area. If you are into filmmaking or just a film buff, then Film Speak is here for you. There are a lot of exciting things happening in the area. There's the Murmur Company production of October Leaves, and that will be filmed in and around the Dayton area. And this spring, they will be filming the movie Carol in Cincinnati and the surrounding area. Oh, that's the one that's starring Kate Blanchett. Miss Blanchett. I know it's hard going into an area and not knowing anybody. Why don't you come by my house and hang out? Hang out with the family. We'll have dinner. I'll maybe watch a movie. And um, maybe, maybe you could sign my copy of The Gift. Hey, you know she's married. Yeah, so am I. We have a great show today. Mark Burris and Joanna Lloyd are here to talk about the short film, The Early Patrons. So stay with us as we watch the short film and talk with our guests about the challenges of filmmaking. Now, The Early Patrons. Sweetie. Thank you, Lori. What would I do without you? You'd get your beer from someone else. Are you hungry, Ray? Yeah, I should probably do something to save you a liquid lunch. Well, there's sloppy joe and the Sounds good. I'd love some. Well, I'm a bartender, not a waitress. You gotta get it yourself. Uh, yeah. You want some, Steve? <sighs> sure, why not? If you're going. Can you have one, sweetie? Um. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna need something to wash down the sloppy joes. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. Guys in the crowd can stop. You guys good? Excellent. I'm good. These taste better than what they look like. Mmm, that's pretty good. Mm. So, um, are you going to do the dart league this year? I don't know. Maybe. Not just yet, but I'm afraid I won't be a regular. I'm just passing through, vacation. Christ, you came to the stink hole for a vacation? <laughs> well, I made a promise to my son. What, is it the crappiest part you could possibly find? <laughs> No offense, Lori. I apologize for this rude ass. 
What's your son's name? He died a couple of years ago. Shot himself right in front of me with my own gun. Oh my god. It's okay, you didn't know. I'm so sorry. You didn't know, you didn't know. Damn. Damn. Jesus. Tim, that was his name. He was molested by some guy named George. When we lived in Cedar Rapids. He blamed me for not protecting him. I never knew. Sorry to be the downer here. Dude, you're fine. Anyway, I tried to find this George fellow. And the only one I could find was a teacher at his school. I watched him for a while. He seemed a bit off, you know? Kind of funny. Can I get another shot? Not at all. Turns out he was a pretty good guy. Homosexual, hiding it only because he loved teaching. Shame people have to hide their lives from other people. Ignorance. Beware of hunting monsters, or you become one yourself. All the things I did to that young man. What you need, sweetie? I get a um, tequila. Double. I'll take one more shot of bourbon. Then I will have to get motivating. Shame you, shame you gotta leave so soon. Yeah, it's a shame. To my son, Tim. How much do I owe you for the shots? Hmm. Tell you what, let me just get everybody's. Thanks, buddy. Thanks. No problem. Oh. So what happened? What did uh, what what when did you find out? This kid, friends with my son. He was also molested by this creep. Crappy shit happened in this world. But I can't tell you one thing. His name definitely was not George. Hey, you've been looking for the wrong guy the whole time? Oh man, damn, damn. Kid was all messed up. Strung out on heroin. Shame to see a young life just get thrown away like that. Gave the kid a hundred bucks. Wished him well, but you know, there's not a lot you can do for somebody like that. When their lives are messed up by some monster just can't think about what he does to other people's lives. <clears throat> Is that why you came here on vacation? That is exactly why I came here on vacation. Huh. That's uh, 
trippy stuff, man. Sorry. Hey, uh, I gotta use it. I'll be back. I don't, I don't, I don't know what's going on. Oh, I think you do, Steve. In fact, I know you do. You know, it's been fun. I think it's time for me to go. You're gonna sit right there. Not an easy man. Fine, Steve. I've been looking for you for a long, long time. Whatever you think. I think you ain't talking your way out of this. Now you're sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're sorry, I'm sorry I caught up with you. I saw you this morning in front of that school. I watched you last night cruising the malls. I was, I'm sick, okay? You consider me the cure. Welcome back to Film Speak. We hope you enjoyed the short film, The Early Patrons, brought to us by um, Joanna and Mark, both from Burn Mill Productions. Uh, they're here to talk about the short film, and then later on we will break down the David Lynch, um, I guess cult classic, you should say, Blue Velvet. So welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks. Glad you guys can join us, um, and thank you for bringing The Early Patrons for us to be able to watch. Um, Mark? Mm -hmm. Uh, tell us how you approached uh, filmmaking and some of the challenges you experienced while making The Early Patrons. Uh, well, uh, first getting into film, uh, of course, you know, with uh, Burn Mill and uh, so forth. Um, basically, well, is when me and you met. <laughs> uh, and we decided to do um, little short uh, skit films. And um, basically with no money, you know, with a cheap camera and... Uh, and all that, we started doing those, and well, we wanted to take it to a more professional level. Um, so, of course, you wound up writing, you know, a script and a story and everything uh, uh, called the Yoga Patrons. Um, 
and through trial and error, you know, of course, uh, doing little films like that, working with different people, uh, we actually got, uh, of course, connected with uh, Lana Reed, you know, uh, also um, owner of uh, the AAG or the Active Artist Group. And uh, she put us in touch with uh, some very talented people, um, a lot of them like minded, like us, really cool, no ego, great talent. Um, so, uh, meeting up with a few of you know other people, um, you know through them as well, maybe some people that they know. Um, we got um, Mark Stacy White uh, and uh, Jim McClure, or James McClure, <laughs> however you know whatever he wants to go by, and of course uh, Joanna Lloyd. <laughs> so and Brian <laughs> Brian Cruz Brian Cruz Brian yeah. Cruz and, yeah and Brian Cruz yeah. Um, and uh, everybody loved the script, and and um, they wanted to be a part of it. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, Joanna, what was it like being on set with the early patrons and working with Mark and Bill? It was great. Um, I'm always nervous when I show up to set, so I got there a little early so I could take a breather. And I met Bill right away and helped him carry in the coffee and... You know, we, we all kind of work together because that's something about um, independent movies when you have a volunteer crew and cast is you all work together to, to kind of pull it off. You know, there's not just, okay, crew and then the actors. I mean, we're all trying to set the lighting. Uh, we were turning off equipment that was too loud and watching the mirrors up on the bar. Um, and so I was learning as I was helping because I, I do want to, you know, eventually learn crew work. So when I'm not acting, I can be doing something on set. And um, I learned a lot that day. And, you know, watching James and, you know, uh, Mike and Brian, they were all awesome. And I know I only had like five lines, but still, I mean, I was just like watching them and I'm, oh, it's my turn. I'll see my line. <laughs> you know, and we, we got it done in like four or five hours, something like that. And it was oh, one of the best sets I was on. Yeah, three hours. I'm like, yes. Was home by noon, had some Chipotle. My, <laughs> my pajamas were on. I was like, yeah, that was awesome. I wish so. I could say the same thing. You know? <laughs> like, no, it was, it was really. Because we were like, me and him, you know, we were like, yes, we got it done. And, and we didn't time really go edit. over the time, you know. We actually got everything. Yeah. You know? No, it was great. It was a great experience. I'm very happy that, you know, I was part of it. So. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah, it was it was awesome. It was a it was a really good experience. Uh, <clears throat> you know, especially it being uh, his uh, first uh, professional short film, um, as as well as really, you know, one of my first, you know, of of somebody else's short films, you know, and so forth. So working with all those people was a uh, definitely um, a learning experience for me. You know, um, I learned a lot from everybody else. I even, you know, learned more about the actors. That way I can communicate easier with the actors into seeing and being able to tell what I want, you know, as a, like a director of photography or, or maybe, maybe later on I'll become a director, you know, as well. Um, so it's good to, you know, meet up with a lot of people um, and meeting up with a lot of the people, you know, that worked uh, on the early patrons with us really taught me a lot. So I think it was, all in all, I think it was a great learning experience for everybody. So, well, I know for me it was a great uh, learning experience, um, especially when talking about the things that don't work out. Right. Uh, which we had a lot of issues of with shooting the early patrons, and you know, it's when doing that. I have now the foresight to try to. We both do. Uh, to try to stop those problems before they occur next time. Mm -hmm. But having half the sound equipment, half the lighting equipment, mm -hmm. and it shows in the production value. Um, but even with that said, the actors from Joanna just having a small part, um, and the, the relationship and the dynamic between um, Jim McClure and Mark Stacy White's characters really is what sells the film. Mm -hmm. um, and is the actors' commitment and everybody, what they did, <coughs> that made it a great project for me. Yes. As somebody um, who at the time, I mean, you introduced us to uh, Joanna, mm -hmm. but we had just met. Right. And so we were still fresh when the early patrons coming out. Looking at it with a pair of eyes outside, outside. of it, um, what did you think of the early patrons? It's very entertaining. I love the story. I love the concept. I love how Jim walks in and just 
plops down between these guys and immediately there's tension when Mark, de he delivers that line, had to be that seat, didn't it? And it's like, ooh, okay, it's gonna start now. Yeah. Um, I like how Brian is right there in the middle of it, but he's oblivious. He's listening to the guy talk, but he's not really into the situation. So I like the dynamic of all the actors, and I love Joanna's little smart tweaks here and there and throwing the towel at Brian and all that. I love it. That was improv. <laughs> Clearly there are things, you know, you would probably do differently now. Yes. But overall, I think it's a good film. I think it would do well in festivals, and I think most people who watch it really enjoy it. Because it's a great story. It is. It, it, I mean, there there is um, some meaning behind it and stuff. Um, I love I love writing uh, character dramas. Um, well, what helps though is when I, I meet actors and I'm able to uh, talk to them and find out how they talk, mm -hmm. and then I find it um, writing easier for them. Yeah. Um, especially. Um, now let me ask you something, uh, Mark. Mm -hmm. um, as being uh, one of the head editors also of uh, The Early Patrons. Yes. Uh, how did you confront the issues that we had with sound and try to correct them and make them the best possible? Well, uh, working with only a, a single shotgun mic, um, it was... <laughs> it, the sound, I'll, I'll just break it into like little parts. Okay, like the sound. You know, we only had one shotgun microphone. And... Um, and usually you would go through uh, like one port, you know, uh, XLR, you know, input or whatever, and it would still have that uh, dynamic, that dynamic, that stereo sound, you know, instead of just like sound being just on one side. Well, on that particular camera, it didn't work. <laughs> so basically, what I had to do is sit there and take that one sound file and and control it dynamically, well, well, create it, um, basically turn it into a, a stereo file um, to have sound on both ends and so forth. And luckily, see, I had picked up ambient noise from, uh, for actually from the camera microphone, okay? And, um, and I'm glad I did, you know? <laughs> because that gave me that extra dynamic that yeah. I could use to to manipulate and control the sound and the atmosphere. Give it, give it depth. Exactly. You know, so I could do um, the best that I could do with, with what I had. With what, with what you had to work exactly. with. Exactly. So I, would, I created it into, um, into, st into stereo or whatever, um, everybody's lines and things like that. And, uh, and, um, and actually, uh, Nick Mifflin, our, our, our sound guy uh, that we had you know, as a boom operator, um, did a real good job in you know keeping keeping up with people's you know the the speech you know every actor's you know speech and whatever they said so it, and it, and it, he did a well enough job to where it was it was easier to be able to manipulate the sounds um, and manipulate the ambient noise in the background you know because of course when you're working with you know just one boom mic um, you're not going to either you're going to get too much ambient noise if it's improperly placed or um, you're not going to get any at all, <laughs> you know, and, and see, that's, that's a bad thing. But uh, recording um, or having a sound file uh, for uh, ambient noise from the camera microphone, it actually worked out in, uh, in our favor because I could control that ambient noise, um, you know, from the, from the camera microphone. So uh, I spent a lot of time on it, a lot of time on it. You know, doing like, sit, I'd sit there for 12 hours straight, just trying to get the sound like as perfect as I could with what I had. Um, now, editing, um, <laughs> this is where it gets really interesting. Because, um, well, of course, um, you did the, the first edit, the rough edit and everything like that, and uh, for you to see what you wanted to. Um, and that worked out. Well, then, <clears throat> well, then, um, you know, <laughs> uh, well, the, the color gradient because it's obvious. It's yeah. obvious um, the appeal and the aesthetic look to it and everything. Um, even if you didn't know anything about film, you can tell how it matches from shot to shot, to shot to shot. Right. The effort that you put in to blend the colors and make sure everything matched. Right, and I had actually burned out uh, my hard drive and everything too and and that set us back so that was like another thing i learned even though i had you know like a good raid system and and so forth uh, 
you know, a bunch of technical mumbo jumbo guys. Um, <laughs> you know, so that that kind of held it back a little bit um, as as far as release, but somehow it worked anyway. <laughs> and you know, I, I borrowed another computer and loaded the files. You know, think you know, thank goodness I I, I saved it. You know, uh, basically, um, but. Yeah, and after it was done, I was so happy it was done, you know? And it looks so good, you know what I mean? I mean, yeah, there's always, you know, you look back on it, it's like, oh, man, you know, like... There's always things you would do differently. There's always things, always things you could do differently. There's, there's always going to yeah. be things you exactly. would do Exactly, right? there's always going to be things like that, you know, that you would do differently, you know, after it's after it's and done. But, but I think you did a great job because we uh, we had the sound problem and he knew that and there was uh, one point remember we all met up at starbucks to try and, and he's uh, like i i need to to get this line i need to record this line and yeah. so <laughs> we're trying to find a place in starbucks and we end up going to like the women's bathroom because there's no one in there and it's got a nice echo and he's like what are you doing here and, like, it was like, you know, so I'm like, what are you doing and he's like no 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 you gotta i because he's looking at the camera and he's watching how you know my voices mm -hmm. was recorded but wasn't really like picked up for you know hey what are you doing here so like three times what are you doing here? <laughs> perfect perfect okay okay now i can you know finish the edit and blah, blah, blah. so i think you did a great job oh, <laughs> well, thanks, thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Well, you did a great job as well. I know it, well. it kind of looked weird coming in the bathroom, but she enjoyed the yeah. Starbucks experience. I'm filmmaking. It's like, oh yeah, let's, uh, let's sneak off into the bathroom and uh, record some sounds. No, well, no, with a camera. <laughs> yeah, with a camera. Uh, well, you know, <laughs> so what do you? What do you? Like, huh? That's better than what probably people probably usually think when actors and uh, movie people disappear into the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they walk by. What are you doing here? <laughs> 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 Nothing, just uh, catching a line, yeah. you know. <laughs> Back to nice. <laughs> well, is there anything else that you took away from doing the production of uh, the early patrons? It, you know, every every set, every production, every director and crew, it's it's a new experience. And you know, for I've only been acting about a year and a half, and I just feel like every set I'm on, I I, I kind of progress and get better and learn more. And that's the the biggest thing is I want to keep learning, whether it's different acting techniques or uh, learning how to work a camera or lighting. I want to keep learning, keep building myself and, you know, become uh, valuable on a team, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I feel like this opportunity kind of, you know, gave me that, you know, gave me kind of a foot in the door and a chance to prove that you know, if, I, if I'm not acting, I want to be doing something else. I want to be making films in some way. I want to learn to edit, you know, and then Mark won't have to do it 12 hours. <laughs> I, we can split it up, you know, six and six hours, you know. But um, that's that's what it, it, it was a great experience to meet new people and to you know build myself more. So, <laughs> and, then, and then of course, and it was one of the key elements that brought us all together. Yes. and that's the important thing. <laughs> well, I, I guess um, if you're going to take anything away from uh, what we have said, uh, the two points being. Make sure you get your sound recorded right <laughs> yeah. um, when you are out um, on a film shoot. And um, take a cue from Joanna. And no matter how good you think you are or how long you've been doing this, never stop learning. Oh. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so join us here in a minute. And uh, we're going to be breaking down the David Lynch cult classic, Blue Velvet. Yes. <laughs> Blue, Blue Velvet. I bet that was terrible. <laughs> uh, uh. Welcome back to Film Speak. Me and Lana are sitting here talking with Joanna and Mark uh, about to break down the cult classic uh, Blue Velvet, which um, I have to share. This is a favorite of Mark and I's. And uh, we put guns to the head of Lana and Joanna and made them watch yeah. it. Uh, so we're all here ready to talk. So what did you guys think of Blue Velvet? Let's start with you. Let's start, <laughs> let's start with you, Joanna, because yeah. you're the, fresh, um, the freshest eyes on it. Well. Uh, I watched Twin Peaks. I'm a huge fan of Twin Peaks. And so I already knew David Lynch kind of had that dreamy, surreal tone, 
but then there's like darker layers underneath. But you kind of use that, you know, dreaminess to kind of, oh, this is so perfect, and then like, whoa. Um, and it was like that with Blue Velvet. It was very dreamy from the opening sequences, and then you find, you know, like an ear. Yeah, and then it gets darker, and then it gets really darker, and then the ending is like, okay, oh, well, that's good. That's a good ending. Um, I liked it. I really did. I, I really liked it. Uh, Dennis Hopper, wow. Yeah. <laughs> he <laughs> blew me away. And I was, I was like, the whole time, I'm like, oh my gosh. He's like, so bad. But um, definitely, I, and I love Kyle. McLaughlin. Yeah. I loved his nude scene too, so. <laughs> Thank you, David Lynch. Well, you know, it's funny you mentioned uh, <laughs> funny you mentioned Dennis Hopper's character because I had read that David Lynch had tried to shop around uh, Blue Velvet to different actors, trying to get them to play Frank. And they, everybody was horrified. Everybody he took it to was just horrified, saying, oh my God, this is like porn. It's horrible. There's no way I could do this. And then he took Blue Velvet to Dennis Hopper. And Dennis Hopper said, holy crap, I am Frank. This character is me. That's me. Wow, I have to yeah. do this. He um, did an amazing job. Yeah, and it was just he really amazing. really did, yeah. What do you think? <laughs> Mark, I, I, know, uh, I know Blue Velvet is a big subject well, for jump you. Jump out of my skin, like, yeah. thinking about it. <laughs> please, brother, please, brother, share us, share us your thoughts on uh, Blue Velvet. Well, uh, I'm, a, I'm an extreme, well, I guess you could say it's extreme. Uh, I'm a huge uh, David Lynch fan, uh, as you all know. Um, one of my favorites is uh, is is Eraserhead, um, but if it, if I can't say Eraserhead, then I have to say Blue Velvet. Um, David Lynch, and like she said, you know, is is a lot of his movies and film, you know, films and and uh, short films and and everything that he does is is kind of dreamy. Um, it's 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 more about the art, um, basically. Uh, showing emotion visually, um, you know, on screen. Um, but man, blue velvet, I love, I love blue velvet because mainly because a lot of the symbolism that's in it, there's so much symbolism in blue velvet, um, from, and most of the symbolism in that, in, in blue velvet is, uh, insects, um, (laughs) yeah, <laughs> I know it's, it's, it's hilarious. I had a Kyle. But, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's because it's because like what, what Mark was saying. It's um, the, the the insects are uh, it's a symbolic value, and it has to do with um, the dark belly of society yeah. being on Earth. That's how I took it. Pretty little flowers, yeah. and you have all these like nasty little bugs, and I'm like, ah, oh, that's a thing. That, yeah, that, <laughs> that, this is going to go somewhere bad. I and know the guys it. water in the lawn, you know, and then and the next thing you know, he has he just has a heart attack and falls over and dies, and the dog is like, <laughs> yeah. and it's like really, you know, pretty music and dreamy, and I'm like, this guy is having a heart attack, and it's like, yeah. <laughs> but with, with a film like with a film like Blue Velvet, because I I know. Know, as a uh, filmmaker, I love mashing um, genres. You know, I won't just make a horror movie. Uh, it has to be a horror comedy or a horror drama. You know, <laughs> I, 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 I like I like mixing the values like that. And with David Lynch, Blue Velvet, um, you get that. You have a mixture of film noir. You know, that classic 1940s, 1950s film noir um, mixed with um, French and Italian neorealism. You know, and that's how you get that kind of like uh, uh, surreal um, kind of dreamy feel to it and everything. And uh, yeah, it just uh, blows me away every time. I can never get tired of watching that movie. Yeah, Mm -hmm. it's amazing. Uh, I really, I really enjoy that movie a lot. I found it to be disturbing. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) But sexy at times in a creepy kind of way. (laughs) (laughs) I love Dennis Hopper. He's phenomenal across the board in everything that he's ever been in. So, and he brought so much, it was almost like gentle terror to this character. And he's so believable. All the characters are so believable when you watch them. The scene where she makes him strip. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. One of my favorite scenes because she just is screaming crazy <laughs> out of her eyes. Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> but you can feel what she's feeling as a woman. She totally. has a lot of emotion. There's it's, a lot of power behind that. And that's that what scene. I like about this film is it, it does the whole roller coaster emotion thing. And when it hits the high peaks, oh. they are high yeah. 
peaks and when they hit lows, they are really, really low. Yeah. So something I find uh, amazing in retrospect looking at Blue Velvet is um, that was Isabella Rossellini's first film. Yeah. Uh, she was a model before then. That's yeah. all she yeah. did was modeling. She was fantastic. And Dennis Hopper hadn't done a movie in uh, 17 years, 16, 16 years. He had yeah. he hadn't been in a movie. 16. So he had a, like a lot of pent up acting, like yeah. 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 maybe he wants to do stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, talk, that was a messed up. Talk <laughs> talk about disturbing. Okay, you talk, you, when you mention that scene, talk about disturbing. <laughs> Isabella Rossellini did not tell Dennis Hopper that she was going to be wearing nothing. Oh. under that robe <laughs> okay yeah. and so he wasn't expecting when she opened that robe up to be you know oh. you know um wow can i say harry clam <laughs> but, okay, well, yeah. that was awkward. Yeah. Well, you know, one of, my, one of my favorite scenes in that movie you know talk about dennis hopper and um you know, and the whole uh, chemistry that uh, the actors had, you know, together is when they're in the car. Um, yeah, I was just going to bring that up. Okay, yeah. and, 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 he, and Dennis Hopper, man, he is just pestering her and just all this, you know, all this stuff. And then finally, you know, uh, guys like had enough and winds up punching him in the face, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I mean, he could have just killed him right there, you know, because he's he's a psycho you know yeah. what i'm saying but instead they get him out of the car and everything like that and then hopper's character puts on the lipstick yeah. and just yeah. starts see i had a and saying the words to a candy coated clown focusing yeah. on that because the girl on top of the car's dancing and i'm like yeah. watching her dance and i'm like she's got some moves you know and my god if that's <laughs> not like, a david lynch film from, you know like i mean, I mean it's just like <laughs> I love it. That's one of my favorite things, you know, about David Lynch. My, my, everything is like symbolism, but you, you got to really pay attention. But then again, it's it's easy to watch if you can stomach it. You know, yeah, <laughs> my, yeah. my 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 my, fav my favorite scene is um, when he lip syncs the song yeah. uh, oh. with Dennis Hopper standing there mm -hmm. and all the things. Because what does it for me? is the disturbing action and implications that are happening in the, in the background. Mm -hmm. right. You know, it's not what's happening in the foreground. It's mm -hmm. not him standing yeah. there um, lip syncing the song into a lampshade. Right. It's, um, it's what's going on behind him and, you know, Isabel Rossellini being led into the room mm -hmm. and then coming out <laughs> and everything. That scene impacts me every time. I, th I think sometimes I have nightmares slash dreams just about <laughs> that scene. <laughs> We're gonna go for a drive. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, and something... I will rethink that if either of you ever say that to me. <laughs> yeah. All uh, right. You want a beer? We should have cans of P yeah. Yeah, PBR laying around. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, another interesting thing about Blue Velvet, um, when it came out in 1986, a lot, there really wasn't any movies like that beforehand. Mm -hmm. And when it came out, even though it wasn't a huge commercial success, I truly believe it paved the way for movies like Tarantino's um, Reservoir Dogs, Pulp Fiction. Um, oh, yeah, I would have to agree. Yes, you know, stuff being done by Richard Linklater. I mean, even something like um, Slacker, mm -hmm. you know, or Dazed and Confused, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, oh, would yeah. those movies have been done and people put money and investments in them if there hadn't been a Blue Velvet? Films about, that yeah. change perspective yeah. exactly. for future filmmaking. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, thanks, right. thanks for taking my um, several <laughs> minutes of rambling and reducing it to one I'm concise so sorry, sentence. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, I think it is great. I think it is great. I'm like, because in my head, I'm like going, well, why didn't I just say that? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Isn't that just the way it works? Because I'm a man. <laughs> I, behind every good man is a woman telling him what to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I gain a lot of inspiration and in, in, uh, from David Lynch and uh, especially Blue Velvet. I mean, I, I just there's there's just so I don't know. There's I could I could sit and ramble about David Lynch all day, you know, and all night, you know. It's had a profound effect on you. Oh yes. yeah, I am forever demented because of that <laughs> film. You know, and, 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 but but it's a good demented. Is is that like an oxymoron? Ah, maybe Something. maybe in yeah. a bit. Kind of like military intelligence. It's a, it's a great <laughs> demented thing of mine. Now. I am more of a demented but good person. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe inspired. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I'll Very leave it nice. at that. <laughs> and I guess. Um, 
to close after that. Um, what did you take away the most from uh, Blue Velvet? Uh, oh gosh. <laughs> it, it was a good movie. It was dark. And I, I kind of like that. You know, it, it, it's almost, for me, it gave the moral of not, it's not what it appears to be. This nice suburban area, you know, where the fireman's waving and he's got this cute little <laughs> dog and people are wondering what it's not this perfect image. There's something darker and meaner beneath that, you know, with Dennis Hopper and his little drug gang, whatever mm -hmm. they were. That was the darker side of it. And that's what I liked, you know. He made it dreamy, surreal, and it had, you know, the music is one thing I picked up on too. Yeah. It's really dreamy music, you know, and then you have an ear in a field, you know, and this huge drug ring. You know, and it was, whoa, did not see that coming. And so that's what I took took away from it is, you know, things aren't always what they appear to be. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, it was great. A great movie. Well, I'm glad everybody enjoyed it. Do you have any final thoughts on uh, Blue Velvet there? No. I, th I think I'm good. I think I'm disturbed enough for a little disturbed while. Disturbed enough yeah. for a little <laughs> while. <laughs> we, we, we can maybe wait a few months before we do another David Lynch film. <laughs> oh, you know what? Uh, no, but I found it very entertaining, and I the acting was just superb. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what? Yes. In closing, and I'll be really quick, you know. So, yeah, sure, honey. Um, you know, uh, another thing about Blue Velvet is um, it was already thought of and, and, and already together uh, even you know way before it came out does that make sense yes um and it started off with uh just like three ideas you know there was the song you know um then uh whatever the other two were uh, oh I, 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 I think one i think one was the <laughs> film noir movie uh, shadow of a doubt um that had a big impact on it yeah something like that and um and then the ear the ear. Mm -hmm. that, yeah. that was the other one. The third one was yeah. the ear. Yeah. You know, but it started off like that, and 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 like, what was that? Like years before it even got I th made. I, th like, I think I think he had um, Blue Velvet as a screenplay about the time he was um, selling Eraser Head, Eraser Head. Yeah. He was. Uh, so, yeah. So yeah he, like he, that, he had it, it that long. Late, yeah, it was like late seventies, I believe. If I if I if I'm correct, mm -hmm. I don't. Too much info up here. <laughs> Something like that. David Lynch has got me. Ah, oh, poor that demented this now. You know? <laughs> but uh, uh, but yeah, great film. Great director, great film. Yep. Well, thank you very much. Um, please join me and Lana for our goodbyes, and join us again on Film Speak. And uh, thank you very much for our wonderful guest, thank Joanne and Mark you. from Burn Thanks. Mill Productions. <laughs> That's a wrap. What a great show. Thank you, Mark and Joanna, for joining us. We hope everybody had a great time. Join us next time on Film Speak when we'll be joined by an aardvark and three nuns. No, no, we won't. Hasta la vista, baby. I'll be back. Can you hurry up? My horse is getting tired. It's not a tumor. Remember when I said I would kill you last? I lied. Well, then. Goodbye. Bye.